we're looking at multiplication. Multiplication and its geometric meaning, that's what makes sense of why we have polar form in the first place, okay? But once you understand like this vector idea, that you can think of complex numbers as like, hey, go here, go there, this unlocks all kinds of really helpful things, okay? Now before I get to this, just look at that diagram we had before, which had uh, root 3 plus i, 3 on 2 plus that diagram, okay? I'll ask you a quick question. I could ask you to this of any of the numbers, but if I've got z there as root 3 plus i, okay? Can you tell me where is z bar, the conjugate of z, where is it in relation to z? This is where z is. Where's z bar? Okay, so hold on a second. So I can actually just write out what the complex conjugate is, right? Root 3 plus i is the original number, so root 3 minus i will be the conjugate. Now the root 3 means I'm the same horizontal position, but the minus i means I'm not going to go up that far, I'm going to go down. So here, and you may want to add this in if you've got a little bit of space on there, if that's where z is, then z bar is down here, okay? Now this is really useful to me because it points out that if I know what z is, right, if it has some modulus and some argument, okay, tell me, what's the relationship between the moduli of z and z bar? What's the relationship? Same. They are the same, right? It's like, look, I'm facing that way, facing that way, but the distance is still r, right? But the angle has changed, right? I'm not facing in the same direction anymore, right? Instead of going up that angle, I've gone <coughs> down that angle, right? So I could say that this is going to be cause of minus, minus theta. theta. Plus i sine of minus theta. Okay, does that make sense? So this is a really useful property and we're going to use it a lot more in the future, but I just want you to notice where it comes from, okay? Right, now, to finish off. I want to push on this vector idea a little more and do some geometry with you because this is one of the cool things about complex numbers that we're used to thinking of arithmetic and geometry as two completely separate things, right? It's like, this is the one where I have to do long division and this is the one where I have to do congruence proofs and they have nothing to do with each other. But complex numbers shatter that, you know, that separation and show that they're really the same thing. I've got a couple of planes here, I'll get diagrams, and I've got these two numbers that I'm interested in understanding their relationship, okay? So there's Z, there's W. Now, quick question for you. Here's the first one. What's the sum of these two complex numbers? What's the sum? You add the real parts, and then you add the imaginary parts. Worth pointing out, by the way, polar form, super useful for multiplying complex numbers, right? But kind of a bit of a pain if all you want to do is add them, right? So do you see how different forms lean you in different directions depending on what you want to do? Okay, great. So z plus w is 5 plus 5 i. Where is that on our diagram? Where, where physically is it? It's all the way up here, right? So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's also 5. So I'm going to put that here. Okay, now at the moment, this just looks like a random set of three points, okay? But using the, our understanding of vectors unlocks what is happening, okay? So I need another color here. Nope, oh, wrong one. I'm going to draw in the vectors for z and w. Here's z, that's that vector, and here is w, is that vector, okay? Now, don't draw this, but like, when you think on the number line, right? If I said to you, 2 plus 3, here's 0, here's 2, here's 3. 2 plus 3, of course, gets you to 5, right? That's the same as doing the vector plus 2, and then after that, the vector plus 3. Do you agree with that? It's like one vector after another. Okay, it's like just chucking them together in a chain. Well, that's exactly what z plus w is. Do you see that? It's like here's the z vector. If you do z and then you do the w vector after that, look at this w vector and look at its relation to this one, right? It's the same vector, right? z plus w, right? It's just stringing the vectors together. And of course we know addition is commutative. What does that mean again? Commutative, commutativity. It means that you can add numbers and you can add them in any order you like and you'll still get the same number. 2 plus 3 is 3 plus 2. And z plus w, w plus z, the same thing, geometrically, why? If you do z first, then you add w, that's where you go. Well, if you do w first, and then you add z, 
It's still the same thing. What you're getting here, and this is actually called the parallelogram ball, right? You have constructed a parallelogram, and the sides of the parallelogram are these vectors z and w. Okay? Now this is really cool. This unlocks a whole world for you. For instance, I asked you for z plus w. What's um what's z minus w? Just look at it. Look at the numbers. Looks like it's gonna be minus three plus i. Okay. Now again, uh, you'll need more quadrants this time, right? If that's where Z and W are, Z minus W is going to be minus 3, 1, 2, 3, plus I. Here's Z minus W. So why is that? How does our understanding of vectors, here's Z, here's W, how does our understanding of vectors help us? Okay, so you can see, I mean, we hardly ever think about this, right? But 2... 2 minus 3, right, is also a sum of vectors. That the sum is 2 plus what? What number am I adding to 2? Negative 3, right? But we know the relationship between 3 and negative 3. They're just facing in opposite directions, right? And it's the same with this. You're adding two vectors together. And I know where negative w is. It's at minus 4, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2, 1, 2. That's negative w over there, right? Can you see the connection? Look, z minus w, right? You see, again, it's just another parallelogram with somewhat wavy lines. Sorry about that. But you see what's going on, okay? Um, so I've got parallelograms everywhere. How about, say, w minus z? Don't even do the computation. Tell me where it's going to go. You go W first, like that, right? And then minus Z means go down that way, right? So just looking at this visually, it should be something like this, yeah? Like that, do you see that? Again, you get another parallelogram, like that. And now you can compute it and tell me that I'm right. W minus Z is going to be, what's the real part? Three, and that's gonna be minus I, isn't it? Three, uh, my scale was a bit off, but you get the idea, right? You see what's happening, okay? So you don't even need to think about these numerically. You can think about these as geometric objects that are just interacting with each other, okay? Now, because this opens up a whole new geometric world, you're like, I'm dealing with numbers. This is not complex geometry, it's complex numbers. Complex numbers are geometry, and that's what we're gonna focus on next week.